Good morning. It is Wednesday, February 14th. Today is Ash Wednesday. This is Michigan Mornings from Ave Maria Radio and the Ave Maria Radio app. I'm Matthew Handley. Yesterday, Homeland Security Secretary Alejandro Mayorkas was impeached by U.S. House Republicans. Father Mitch Pacwa explains the church teaching on immigration in just a few minutes. But first, your local weather and this news. Yesterday, a series of laws passed by the Democratic State House and Senate over the last few years have taken effect. First, Michigan has become the first state to repeal the right to work law. Right to Work was passed in 2013 under former Governor Rick Snyder when the state house and Senate were firmly under Republican control. If you're going to reap benefits, then you ought to be able to be a part of the solution, which means everyone contributing to the strength of the union and their ability to negotiate and improve wages and working conditions. That's Michigan AFL-CIO President Ron Bieber. The Mackinac Center for Public Policy disagrees. It says no one should have to join a union against their will. Also going into effect yesterday was a bill repealing the measure which held back third grade students due to low reading scores. The bill amends a 2016 law and instead requires parents and guardians to be told of their student's reading issue. Information will be given to the adults about intervention programs and the student will be put through a program through fourth grade to help them achieve the reading standard. Under the old law, a student with low reading scores could only advance by getting an exemption from a superintendent or school administrator. Additionally, the state's new red flag law took effect yesterday. The law allows law enforcement, mental health professionals, and family members, including former spouses and dating partners, to petition a judge to remove firearms from someone if they believe he or she is dangerous. Former Detroit Police Chief James Craig is suspending his campaign for Senate. The Republican was vying for his party's nomination for the seat that will be left vacant next year by Democrat Debbie Stabenow. Craig told the Detroit News that his decision to drop out was fundraising related and that he didn't think his campaign could afford the cost of verifying the required 15,000 ballot petition signatures for him to make the primary ballot. Craig previously ran a campaign for governor in 2022, but was disqualified from the ballot after state officials found that he had too many fraudulent petition signatures. United Auto Workers Union members are growing frustrated as General Motors has not yet committed to a timeline for a $50,000 retirement buyout program. Brian Shook reports. The company agreed that there are three times an employee can retire and receive the bonus, but has not announced the timeline for the deal. GM says they are working with the union on the details, while a UAW leader says the timeline is expected to be finalized in February and communicated to members soon. I'm Brian Shook. And the Grand Rapids man who is credited with inventing Pop-Tarts has died. William Post was a Keebler plant manager in GR in the 1960s when he was approached by executives at Kellogg to create a breakfast food for the toaster. Three years later, Pop-Tarts were born. His obituary says he was a member of the Gideons and that through his life, he testified to God's goodness. Will Post died this weekend at the age of 96. Now this. This is Franciscan Father Greg Friedman for the Catholic Communication Campaign with a message about faithful citizenship. Our political debates are sometimes more like a war of words. Exchanges on talk radio and in blogs are often vicious and not always truthful. The gospel challenges us to confront contemporary issues in the light of gospel truth and charity. The U.S. bishops are calling for civility in politics. Do your part to bring Christian charity to the public arena. Go to faithfulcitizenship.org. Persecution around the world has manifested itself through the centuries, but it is worse today than ever before. Aid to the Church in Need and its donors have been there to help since 1947, never abandoning the Church or her most vulnerable children. Will you stand up for your faith and accompany our brothers and sisters on their spiritual journey? Visit churchinneed.org. churchinneed.org. Today's Detroit weather has mostly sunny skies with highs in the mid-30s. Tonight, expect partly cloudy skies transitioning to cloudy with a slight chance of snow showers after midnight and lows in the upper 20s. Thursday brings rain showers, possibly mixed with snow in the morning, followed by a chance of rain or snow showers in the afternoon with highs in the lower 40s. Friday remains mostly cloudy with a slight chance of afternoon snow showers and highs in the mid-30s. Saturday maintains mostly cloudy conditions with a chance of snow showers and highs in the lower 30s. 
Today's Saginaw forecast features mostly sunny skies with highs reaching the mid-30s. As night falls, anticipate mostly cloudy conditions and a chance of snow showers after midnight with lows in the upper 20s. Tomorrow brings a mix of snow and rain showers in the morning, followed by a chance of snow showers in the afternoon. Temperatures in the lower 30s. Friday, the weather remains mostly cloudy with a chance of snow showers in the afternoon and highs around 30. Saturday brings mostly cloudy conditions with a chance of snow showers and highs in the upper 20s. A lot is being made right now about how the U.S. is handling its southern border. And we ought to ask ourselves, what does the Catholic Church teach about immigration? Father Mitch Pacwa SJ joined Teresa Tamio on Catholic Connection to discuss the issue. What you are always dealing with is the tension that exists between what is just and what is merciful and charitable. You look to show charitable love, a love that expects nothing in return. You also look to show mercy to those who are in need, and you also require justice, which means giving everybody what is due to them. That's the basic tension we deal with. And the catechism deals with that in regard to immigration. So it points out, and as you mentioned, 2241, that the more prosperous nations are obliged to the extent that they are able to welcome the forder in search of security and a means of livelihood, they cannot find in the, their country of origin, and that it is a, a natural right that is respected that places a guest under the protection of those who receive them. That's, you know, so when we invite people who are homeless without food or are being uh, attacked by their own governments, uh, you know, a lot of uh, governments are attacking people because of their religion. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, most, uh, all religions that are attacked by the Chinese government, uh, Catholics in some places, Protestants, and so on. So, you know, protecting them is, is good. But it's also key to welcome them. Uh, uh, it, there's an obligation to the extent they are able. That's the other side of it. That's where there is an issue of justice uh, to the receiving country. Catholic Connection is coming up at 8 a.m. here on Ave Maria Radio. St. Clement says, Let us keep our eyes firmly fixed on the Father and Creator of the whole universe and hold fast to His splendid and transcendent gifts peace and all his blessings that does it for this edition of michigan mornings from ave maria radio and the ave maria radio app i'm matthew handley you can follow me on x at radio handley lord willing i will be back tomorrow until then goodbye